around five out of 10. If you've just joined me and you have no idea what I'm doing and what all these panels are behind me, then I highly recommend going back to the start of the series. Uh, I've got 12 red light therapy panels. I'm testing them and comparing them across, across all sorts of metrics uh, and helping you figure out which panel is the best panel to buy. Uh, based on your goals, objectives, and if you don't really care and you just want to take my word for it, then um, yeah, at the end of the series, I'm gonna have all the answers for you. But today, we're looking at three things. We're looking at LED count, we're looking at whether these panels offer pulsing technology, and whether they use multi-wavelengths. Uh, so, if you know much about red light therapy, traditionally, companies utilize 660 nanometers and 850 nanometers. 850 being a near-infrared wavelength, we can't see it, it's invisible. 660 being red, it's very red, simple as that. Those are the two main wavelengths that uh, we saw in products and we still see them today. Now, they were used for a couple of reasons. Firstly, there was a lot of science behind these wavelengths showing how effective they are. But secondly, it was quite cheap for manufacturers to, to make LEDs in these wavelengths. That's why most of the companies were using them, right? All those two reasons. But now what we're seeing is a lot of science emerging that some other wavelengths are also as effective, if not more effective. Some of these other wavelengths don't have the same amount of uh, scientific volume behind them, but there's still a lot of evidence to show that they offer benefits. So now we're seeing companies tap into this, they're incorporating some of these other wavelengths, um, but it's getting interesting because some of these LEDs can be more expensive to produce. So some companies don't wanna go down that path, some of them do, but they only use a few LEDs and other, other companies are like, hey, we just wanna make the best panel possible, even if it's going to up the price. So we're going to look at all those things soon. We're also looking at pulsing. Now pulsing is something new. To be honest, I was first exposed to it properly uh, with the light path LED panel, which we have behind me. I have used a V-Light or a Violite that utilize pulsing technology. I was, I was aware of it, but not really when it came to body panels, right? Today we have two panels that utilize pulsing technology. I mentioned light path LED. The Juve Solo also uses, uses pulsing technology. It's interesting because some people say, yeah, it's amazing and it's a game changer. Other people say, no, it's just a, it's just a fad, right? So, so when it comes to scoring this round and trying to determine which panel is better than the others, it gets a little bit tricky because we don't exactly know how good the pulsing is and if it is better. We don't know how good those alternative wavelengths are and all of that, right? So what I've decided to do is assume that yes, pulsing is a value add and a performance and health enhancer. And I also personally believe that some of these alternative wavelengths are good. They are beneficial to our health, right? So my ranking system for this round is built this way. If a panel offers pulsing technology and multi-wavelengths, then straight away they're going to the top. If there's multiple panels in that category, then I sort them based on how many LEDs they have, how many LED bulbs they have. If they only have one or the other, pulsing or multi-wave technology, then they go to the second tier. Next, I sort them based on how many LEDs they have. Finally, we're left with all the panels that don't offer multi-wave technology, i.e. they only use 660 and 850, and they don't offer pulsing. Then, again, I sort them based on the number of LEDs. I think it's a reasonably fair way to do it. There's no hard science behind this. Unfortunately, it's not a round that I can quantify, you know, like I did with the EMF round using my EMF meter or the power output using my spectrometer. It is a little bit subjective. Hey. It's a review, it's a comparison, it's all for a bit of fun, uh, but I think, I really do think it's quite fair. Okay, so I'm gonna work from last place through to first place. At the end of this, we'll give each panel a score and then we'll update our overall standings. We have 12 panels and we can split them in half. Six of these panels offer pulsing and or multi-wave technology and the other six don't. They simply use 660 and 850 and they don't offer pulsing. The panels that don't offer any of those advanced features are all in the bottom six. So what I'm doing with these panels is simply ranking them from the number of LEDs high to low, right? Simple as that. That's how I came up with the bottom six here. So in last place, we have Blue Blocks Hive Max. This has no pulsing, no multi-wave technology, and has 200 LEDs. There were two panels in second to last place, one being the Infrared Max. Again, it only uses 660 and 850. It doesn't use pulsing technology and it has 210 LEDs. And the same thing applies with the Cyto LED uh, triple X. In ninth place, we have the Red Rush 720 that has 240 LEDs. And then in seventh equal, we have two panels. We have 
the Red Light Ryzen Advantage 900 with 300 LEDs and the Rug Pro which also has 300 LEDs. That leaves us with six panels. Now all of these remaining panels have either pulsing technology or multi-wave. The ones that have both pulsing and multi-wave are straight to the top. Okay, so in sixth place, we have the Jimbered Reboot. This doesn't have pulsing technology, but it does use multi-wave technology. In fact, it has four wavelengths in here and it utilizes 150 LEDs. In fifth place, we have the Juve Solo 3.0. What's interesting is the Juve Solo only uses 660 and 850, the traditional wavelengths, but it does utilize pulsing. However, the pulsing is limited to 10 hertz only. There's only one setting, all right? And they use that for their near infrared lights only. So you can't see any pulsing, but if you enable it, it's only the near infrared pulsing at 10 hertz, so 10 times a second. Juve claim that this helps recovery, so they call it their recovery plus mode. I think it's cool. I mean, hey, um, I use it whenever I'm using the Juve. I enable recovery mode because why not, right? Okay, so now there's four panels remaining. One of these panels, and they come out on top, use both pulsing and multi-wave technology. The three others only use multi-wave technology. So let's look at those three first. In fourth place, we have the Solbasium Optics 180. Now, it doesn't use pulsing, like I said, but it does have five wavelengths in this panel. All of these panels that use multi-wave technology, they all use custom blends. Some of them only use a few percent in a specific wavelength. Others use like a, a even spread. So for instance, the Mito Red, which we'll look at soon, has four wavelengths and they're equally split, split 25% of each. It's not true for the Solbasium and it's not true for some of the other panels. If you do wanna know the full breakdown of all of these panels, then um, check out the data sheet I have below or head over to alexfergus.com. I'll put a link to the blog and that will show all the stats as well. Or of course, just head over to the product page for these panels. So the Solbasium Optics 180, we have five wavelengths in this panel, 180 LEDs and no pulsing. In third place, we have the Platinum LED Biomax 600. Now, this is the second generation Biomax 600. The first generation also used five wavelengths. Platinum LED have kept the same ratio, same five wavelengths, same blend. Uh, I think you're only getting like seven or 10% in some of the wa smaller wavelengths. 80% of the light in this panel was still going to 660 and 850, all right? So that just shows that, you know, Platinum LED obviously believed that that's the core benefit for red light therapy. The other ones are nice to have, like nice additions. Here we are in third place, no pulsing, but five wavelengths, and they offer 200 LEDs in this Biomax 600. So in second place, we have the Mito Red Mito Pro 1500. Now, like I said before, they use multi-wave technology. They use four wavelengths. And what Mito Red have done is they've split those wavelengths equally. So 25% of power goes to each wavelength. So some could argue, hey, the Biomax uses five wavelengths, but Mito Red uses less wavelengths, but more power is going to those, what I say, what I call alternative wavelengths. Now, the reason why the Mito Red is in second place ahead of the Biomax, even though it's got less uh, wavelengths, is because I, I rank it based on the number of LEDs. So the Mito Red has 300 LEDs. Like I said before, the Biomax only has 200 LEDs. In first place then, we have the Light Path LED Large Multi-Waved Pulse Panel. Yes, that's the name, and it explains why it's in first place. It's large, it's got 255 LEDs, it's multi-wave, it's got five wavelengths in it, and it uses pulsing technology. But not only does this use pulsing technology, it allows you to customize what pulsing you wanna use. Anything from one hertz right through to 10,000 hertz. It's insane. You can do it all through the control panel or using the little remote that I have in my pocket. If you're curious to learn more about this technology, I highly recommend checking out the review I have on my LightPath LED panel, but also the interview I have with uh, the founder of the um, light path company, uh, Scott Kennedy, his name is. So Scott believes that pulse light is a massive game changer. In fact, he's gone beyond allowing the individual to customize what pulsing frequency to use, but he's incorporated what are known as Nogia frequencies. And uh, I don't wanna get into that now because I've already covered that in my other videos, but that's incorporated into the control system in this panel. The other thing I should point out, only two panels in here use pulsing the Light Path LED panel, and also the Juve Solo, right? Juve only pulse 10 hertz with their near infrared lights. Light Path LED, as I said, you can choose anything from one to 10,000, but it's also effective for both red light and near infrared light, which to be honest is a little bit crazy because when you have this going 
uh, pulsing red light at a low hertz, you know, 10 hertz or 15 hertz or something like that, it's quite intense. So it's for these reasons why the Lightpath LED large pulse multi-wave panel comes out first place for this round. It is a large panel, 255 LEDs. The fact that you can pulse red or near infrared light of any frequency of your choosing, uh, and it also incorporates five wavelengths, it's simple to see why it came out number one. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna update the scores and see where the panels are sitting as we hit five rounds. Yeah, we're halfway through this. So let's pull up that score chart. Okay, so with the updated scores, what we see is uh, two panels are on first, um, first decal. The Mito Pro 1500 and the Biomax 600. These guys are hitting it out, huh? I mean, it's, we always knew it was gonna be close. It's the most common question I get. Uh, with the red light therapy, uh, should I get the Mito Red panel or the Platinum LED panel? Um, and halfway through this competition, <laughs> I still can't answer it. And I've always said, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. So um, I personally have been using Platinum LED panels for a long time and it's what I recommend with my family and all that. Um, like I said in my previous video, all of these panels are good. It's just which ones best suited to your, your budget, your needs, all that sort of stuff. You can't go wrong with any of them, I guess. But anyway, the other interesting thing is there used to be three panels tying out for um, top spot, but we can see that the infrared Max has fallen behind uh, big time because it didn't utilize multi-wave technology or pulsing, and it's not, um, it doesn't have a lot of LEDs either. So it's, it's scored quite bad in this round, only, only three points. Uh, and that's why it's seen, we've seen the gap between those top two panels and third place now really open up. And infrared is only now a couple of points ahead of fourth place. Fourth place is the light path LED panel, which got max points in this round and is thus, uh, you know, surging ahead and in chase of that third spot place. So it is, it is gonna be really interesting to see how those panels all finish up. I always knew the light path LED would do good. I think I said that in my reviews. I said, look, this is gonna, it's gonna do well. Uh, it's, got some, it's got some good features and good power. So it will be interesting to see how it goes after a few more rounds. Uh, in middle of the pack there, Solbasium on 35, Red Rush, the classic, the old school Red Rush, doing well on, um, on 30 points. Jimbo Red Reboot, 28. The Saito LED, Triple X, 27. The Rug Poro on 26. The Juice Solo moved up one position on 25. And would you look at that? The Red Light Rising Advantage 900, which had been in last place for four rounds, is now in second to last place. And Blue Locks Hive Max has dropped into last. In the meantime, though, if you did want to race out and get any of these panels, be sure to use discount code Alex or check out my individual reviews on any of these panels. And, um, we will see you soon.